Hey, welcome to the Grand Channel. My name is DJ. If you've been rocking with me for a while, thank you. Welcome back. If this is your first time, appreciate you. Today, um, I'm going to do reviewing and um, open box in the Vizio 5.1 M series uh, soundbar. It is the, let me show you which model this is. It is the <clears throat> M51AX, the J6 model. There's a H6, which is um, a little fancier than this. Um, it's, I think it's, I believe it's a 5.1.4 or 5.1.2. And um, I'll go ahead and get into the the uh, 0.5 and what they mean and stuff like that. All right. This is a true surround sound sound. Um, excuse me, surround sound system, or this is a true s surround sound bar system, sound bar system. Um, and I'll explain that once again. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and then let you see what's in the box and everything else. And then as we go down the road, I will go ahead and once again, let you know what the difference between 2.1, you know, two, three, you know, all the different, um, type of, type of, um, sound bars there are, or even period, even home theater systems use the same, you know, channels and stuff of that nature. And I explain all of that to y'all. All right. So here we go. All right, so this is what the box looks like. You want to take a knife and go ahead and just cut this tape. And then voila. All right, and then we're going to open it from the tape side uh, because on the other side, there is no tape. So um, they clearly want you to open it where the tape is at. I bought this particular sound system, this uh, sound bar, because out of a lot of them, the price point was nice, and then I heard the sound and everything. So I'm going to give it a test and you know let y'all know in this video um, how everything is going and how everything sounds, um, which is just like I, I heard some amazing things and I've done multiple you know reviews on like uh, actually there's really no video, no unboxing or no video about this one on YouTube. So I'll probably be one of the first ones to do it. Um, I think this is a 20, either a 2020 or 2021 model. And then um, with that also being said, like there's the H6 has plenty of reviews if you look it up. So there's a lot, but I don't think for the J6 there's a lot. So um, I bought it just because of the price point was nice and because I heard phenomenal things. Like this, um, honestly, I've beaten certain 9.1 Point two channels out there, be it a couple nine point one channels. So I mean, it's it's performing very very well, um, even though it's only a five point one, and it is a true five point one. Um, now, what's going to amaze some people is that that it has nine speakers. So I don't want people to think that just because it had you see a five point one means that it only has like five speakers and the point one is normally the sub. So if you see point two is two subs. So it goes uh, channel, it goes channel, then it goes um, subs basically, and then it goes uh, upward or down firing um, for your Adobe, uh, Adobe, excuse me, Adobe Atmos DTX. And other um, advanced sound settings um, that might require, you know, uh, speakers shooting up or shooting down to create a virtual 360 type of sound. All right. So now back to the unboxing. It's going to have these little pull tabs. And you're just going to pull it straight up. All right. Once you got all three tabs. Oh, that's four. So oh, I've missed one. Hey. All right. So once you do that, you literally do that. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then you literally just take this and you start sliding your stuff out. This is like this is the CX, this is the accessories box. Your left and right rear satellite speakers. The five inch sub, so the H6 has a um, six inch sub. This one has a five inch sub. And last but not least, is the sound bar itself, which is about like 36 inches. So, this is what the sound bar looks like it's charcoal 
gray or charcoal yeah charcoal gray i want to say i was gonna say charcoal black but nope it's charcoal gray so um underneath it it does have a, a hdmi e-art and then it also has um the uh, regular hdmi and then it has your optical and usb and then it has auxiliary cords so you can actually um plug in your Alexa or your voice assistants basically and it controls the bar then it also has a regular one for you could just you know plug your headphones in um, real nice real easy and that's where the power is at up top you see your volume up volume down Bluetooth um, this is Bluetooth enabled so you could uh, wirelessly you know play your music and stuff of that nature um, your source button so your different HDMI connections and then the power button um, it's not heavy at all. Um, it's really nice. Uh, I like it. Um, the screws on the bottom is so that you can mount it to. So certain uh, Vizio TVs have it where you can mount it right underneath. So it'll look just like that, basically. Um, but we won't be mounting. We're just going to sit it um, like it's, you know, standard. Like basically sit it just like that. Here's the sound bar. I mean, the sound bar. Here's the subwoofer. It's nice. It's uh, quite compact. It's not big at all. To put it in perspective right there. Now, once again, it's a five inch. Those are the, the cords in the back. Um, so I'm either going to put it right there or put it in that corner. But I think right there would be perfect for the setup. Um, here's the TV right. Sorry for that. Here's the TV right there. Um, the sound bar is going to go right there, right underneath. And then... Um, the satellite speakers are going to be on that corner and that corner right there. So, yeah, this would be perfect. The cool thing about Vizio, it gives you everything you need in this accessory kit. I mean, it's wow. So, um, long power cord for the sub, short if you need it. So, you get to choose between long and short. Nice size, it's like it's going to fit that profile right there perfectly so this should um, do it for my left and right um, satellite speakers connection they give you an HDMI cord which is um, used for arc um, but you might want to just in case it should play it I mean I haven't seen anything bad about it yet but just in case you might want an HDMI 2.1 um, to get that pure good experience but this should do fine they also give you the mountain brackets for when you want to either put it on the wall or if you want to put it um, on a TV stand or something. I mean, not a TV stand, but a, a speaker stand, which I, I did order and it should get here by Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. But this is also the wall brackets, just in case if you want to do it that way. The remote, which has an LCD, which has quite a few uh, adjustments to it and stuff of that nature. Um, they also give you good batteries. It's Duracell and um, Energizer, or the, to me, are very good batteries. You got a couple other brands, but those two always hold up. Um, then they gave you Velcro, so you could, you know, neatly organize your cords. They gave you the optical, which I'll be using. I'll be using the optical, not HDMI. The digital optical cable, which is perfect. Um, they gave you the manual, and then that's it. So that's basically it for the accessories box, which is still great. I mean, thank you, Vizio. Now, let's go check out the left and right speakers. These are the left and right satellite speakers. They're not bad at all. I thought they was going to be bigger than this. But this actually uh, seems like it's going to work and everything, uh, especially for that, that surface. Um, the way I plan on doing it <clears throat> is having it slightly higher. So, like, putting this like this, um, in a sense, or trying to have it as close as this but right now i'm gonna just lay them right here like this i suppose and just aim it just like that for the listeners until i get uh, the stand but i'm gonna try to have it like right about here and aiming it towards this direction just like that um same thing on this side so this side um so this side i plan on having it like right here just like that uh, maybe this high so, and then you could also individually adjust the volume on the left, on the left and right uh, satellite speakers, which is perfect. So I could increase this one and decrease them so they won't 
so you could kind of you know play with the lag and stuff like that so you could basically hear it at the same time and the loudness so you know you won't be tripped out to get that 360 sound and that's what you're aiming for all right once again this is the unboxing so it comes with that that and that now i'm about to go ahead and uh put these up and install them all right guys see you in a little bit hang tight all right so i put it there and i wired the the cables behind the couch um i put the other one put the other one right there and i once again i did the same thing i wired it behind the couch um, this connects to the subwoofer and then the subwoofer is wireless except for the power cord. So technically this is a true wireless system, but a lot of times um, you will get either where these two rear satellite speakers need their own power and then they're truly wireless and they sync up with the unit itself. Or um, you would do the sub, you know, the wireless sub and the sub would power the, the two other speakers. But if you do get two rear satellite speakers that um, doesn't require the sub, then the power of those speakers are not going to be that high. So it's always best for them to be wired to the uh, route, uh, to the to the subwoofer because that's where you get the most the power from, basically. So yeah, once again, that's the setup. Everything's color coordinated. Uh, for this one, blue is left, and then uh, gray is right. The sub has these little LEDs to indicate where it's at. And right now it's actively trying to search where the um, connection is. So um, hopefully the girl, the girlfriend likes this. Um, she's at work right now, so I put this together and um, hopefully she likes the setup and everything up. Connect your TV to one of the soundbar's inputs and power your TV on. So the soundbar will say that to you until you get the connection right. So right now I'm actually about to go to um, about to play it without the soundbar, so you get an idea of you know how the sound was, and then I'm gonna play it with the soundbar on, so we get that idea. All right. So one more sec. All right. So um, so I won't get copyright. I'm using my own channel and stuff in the background, so we could do this test. All right. So as you see here, my phone is stereo, so it picks up left and right. So this is what the TV sounds like. Um, just by itself, right? Uh, without the soundbar. And this is about at 27. So when you get into movies, it gets a little dicey. But right now, it, you know, it's fine. But when you just when you get the movies. So I'm going to let you go ahead and hear it. There's five trim levels to this. Uh, one is the premium. Then it goes, no, the base premium, then it goes goods. to the, to one of the sound. All right, now I'm about to let you listen to the same audio clip, but with the sound bar and everything else at full operation, all right? So give me one second for that. So, all right, we're going to do the speaker test. So right now we're going to go to setup, and then we're going to scroll down. And then we're going to go to speaker test. And then you're going to hit OK. Left front. Left front. Center. Center. Right front. Right front. Right rear. Right rear. Left rear. Left rear. So as you've seen that it worked, which is great. Now let's go ahead and get it on the TV. All right, so this is with the... Uh, cell phone, but for your Bluetooth. Everything surrounded. Now check this out. And telescopic steering wheel. So that's like level two, it basically. Sensors, and the mirrors automatically fold in and out. So just by if you push this button here, just so you can see if you can hear the they fold out the surround sound so nature I'm of it. Not trying to show you the miles yet, but I got y'all. You can hear the audio All right. from the so different sides. Memory seats. And then also to change and adjust your seat belt, you just push that button right there. It has, like once again, radar guided cruise control. So you just push that. So this is sound bar. Also, this has, uh, so if you put this on sport, it stiffens up the suspension. Sound bar is off now. This is TV. It's really meant for like, if you're going over speed bumps and if you need to get over a high driveway. Um, but then throughout the whole thing, Hang on. 
All right, so that's the TV right now. And then now this is the the sound bar. You ready? I believe all the models have the traction control. And then um, this button right, this button right here resets the rear seats. And I'll show you exactly what that does in a little bit. When TV. Heated and cooled or heated and ventilated front seats. Sound bar. That's the ash that I'm most likely going to put my cell phone. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, no one, you know, really smokes anymore nowadays. Everything is automatic. Soundbar. Let me show you a little quick, another quick. Uh, you push that button. And it oscillates. TV. It just pushes air through the cabin and everything, and it moves automatically. Isn't that cool? It's, it's a little. All cool. right. So as I was trying to tell you earlier about the different channels, so um, <clears throat> this particular one is a 5.1, which is five channels. So you got your left front, your center, and then your right front. Then you have your left rear. Then you have your right rear that is five channels one two three four five your point one is the sub now even though that this has five channels there's nine speakers so um i believe that there is at least five let me see five six seven and then eight so there must be six up here one on each of those so six seven eight and then here's the nine speaker your sub technically is a speaker um, and that's how they count it. even in cars it might you know you might have a 32 speaker sound system um, but they do add the sub as a, as a, as a speaker um, now with that being said there are I believe let me check real quick yeah so just off the box alone there's a tweeter then there's a mid then there's a center, which is basically, uh, it's like a tweeter, but it's actually a dedicated center. And then there's also a mid, and then it goes tweeter and mid again. So those are your six speakers. Seven and eight are two mids, and then your sub would make it a nine. Um, so once again, even though this is a 5.1, there's nine speakers. This outperforms and outbeats a 9.2.4, I believe, or a 9.1.4. Um, so... I don't want you to think like uh, when it comes down to these channels that like you need technically more channels to outbeat you. If you have a really good sound system, it will beat some some other ones that have nine channels, 10 channels, 11 channels and such, so forth and so on. So basically the channels is what is like direct. Right. So. For instance, this one has a left front that has its own particular sound that it produces, basically, um, um, audio wise. So nine channels would be <clears throat> like it might have two dedicated lefts and two dedicated rights um, to produce that particular sound. And that's how you get your surround sound. So you might also see like something like a 5.2.4, right, or 0.2. Um only thing that's just trying to tell you is that it has five channels. It has one or two subs. So point one or point two would be your subs. The point two or the point four is the upward firing, like upward firing speakers, the ones that shoot towards the ceiling and then it bounces. It shoots towards the ceiling and bounces down. So you get like that total 360 immersive sound. And then um, some of them even have down firing. So you have some that shoots down, that bounces up, and then you have some that shoot up and bounces down um, to give you that three, like give you that super immersive um, sound. So um, I personally never had a system that had the, you know, like upward facing surround sound. Um, I, I've dealt with uh, Panasonic's before and I've dealt with Bose. 
Um, and those are traditional home theater systems, not sound bars. So I really don't know what to go off of. But basically going from the TV to this, it, it does seem very phenomenal. I will update you to let you know how it does on movies and stuff. But right now, just for this simple test that we just did, um, it is out the park. It got the dogs thinking that I'm in like three different places. The dogs are up trying to find me and search around the house because it is just that much sound. Um, it is really, 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 really good at this point. Um, with that also being said, it's not loud. Like I don't have to turn it up that loud to get a very good sound quality out of this. And the finish is just nice. Um, everything looks nice. Looks good, especially when I get those stands. Um, everything just seems to be perfect and put into place. Um, so, yeah, with the whole, uh, whew, how can I put this, um, the like the, the channels, you'll think that, you know, if you have more channels, it'll create a better sound. But actually, this thing plays a little trick where it makes it seem like it's bouncing off the ceilings and bouncing off the walls and stuff like that. So um, it gives you that it gives you close. It's like a virtual, right? Um Dolby Atmos and then um, D DTX and it is um, the other one I can't think of. Um, there's another um, Dolby application out there, as you see. But um, basically, this doesn't give you the true, true, true because it doesn't have no upward fire ones. But it gives you that virtual. It's very close, um, but you know, not. It's not going to give you that true Dolby. At most, or the DTX sound that you're looking for, but it does try to mimic it. It tries to produce it the best way possible with these nine speakers. So, um, man, this is my review. So far, so good. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Um, it was real easy to set up, real nice. And um, like I said, I will update you. But basically, this is it. Thank you so much. Appreciate you watching. Have a good day, guys.